Hello everyone, I'm Sang from Salqua Types. In today's video, I'm upgrading the HHKB that I use every day for work with a gorgeous Heavy Grail aftermarket kit. While I'm at it, I'll also modify the switches to support MX keycaps instead of Topra and give everything a quick tune-up. Before we start the mods, here's a quick sound test of how my stock HHKB sounds. To be completely honest, I'm not the biggest fan of how it sounds, but the switches on the HHKB are sublime to type on and quite different from any other MX board I've used. But first, with that done, I'll start disassembling. I need to harvest the PCB, controller, domes, capacitive coils, and the stabilizer wires. As you can see by the pristine sticker, this is the first time I'm taking this board apart. Although I really enjoy building MX keyboards, I use my HHKB primarily for work because it's incredibly comfortable to type on over long periods of time. I'm trying to be as careful as I can when opening the case so that I don't rip the blue ribbon cable out of place. The cable in this HHKB Pro 3 is incredibly delicate, and I need to maneuver it carefully with this tiny metal handle to avoid damaging it. With that out of the way, we get a clear view of the underside of the circuit board. PCBs are often beautiful in their own right, and the HHKB is no exception. On this board, I love the Topra branding and the board info in this corner, and how these resistors are arranged like wings here at the top, and small city blocks at the bottom. Before I remove the bottom screws, I'm going to make my life a bit easier and remove the shift, spacebar, and return keys, so that it's easier for me to remove the sliders under those keys later on. I'm not sure why this metal spring is here, but I assume it helps the spacebar snap back into place when it's pressed. There are a total of 18 screws that hold the PCB in place under the switch plate. One reason there are so many screws here is that the circuit board has to be perfectly aligned under the switches in order to function correctly. Topper switches aren't socketed and soldered into a PCB like a switch would be on an MX style keyboard. Instead, these domes and coils are sandwiched directly between the plate and the board. Because Topra switches are so different from MX switches, it's actually really hard to compare the two. The switches on this HHKB are light, yet firmly tactile with a gentle bump and a smooth bottom out. The whole typing experience feels very pleasant and also very unique to Topra. Because I don't want my skin oils getting all over the domes and springs, I'll put on some gloves before I start removing the domes from the circuit board. Basically all of the domes on my board stuck on to the PCB, and I unfortunately made a rookie mistake and spilled the parts everywhere. I need to save the domes and springs to transplant them into the heavy grail. An interesting thing about the HHKV switch plate is that it's integrated into the top housing of the case. 
Normally, I would need to remove all those black sliders in the plate, but since I'm using some custom sliders, I'll only need to harvest these wires from the stabilizers. I found that using a small flathead screwdriver and a bit of pressure did the trick. There's a little bit of lube on the wires that I'll clean off with some rubbing alcohol. So that's pretty much it for the disassembly. I'll now start to assemble the heavy grill, starting with the switch plate. This particular plate came with some minor discoloration in the corners, and I also drilled some <laughs> crude cutouts on the stabilizers to support MX keycaps on shift and return. None of this will be visible once the keyboard is put together though, so it doesn't really bother me too much. The bottom of the plate has these super smooth hand polished rails that I'll now loop with a very thin coat of Crytox 205 grade zero for extra smooth key presses. The HHKB and Heavy Grail both use an intricate plate with built-in rails that act as the legs on the toper switches. That's why I'm lubing the rails similarly to how I would lube the legs on an MX style switch. Speaking of MX switches, these are the custom sliders that I'll be using. If the plate is like the legs of an MX switch, the slider in a toper switch is like the stem. The original black sliders from my HHKB are only compatible with toper keycaps like this one. But these aftermarket cream sliders from Deskeys support MX keycaps with the iconic cross stem. To round things out, I'm adding some silicon on the bottom of each slider. The dust key sliders are designed to be used with silencing rings, but since I'm not using silencers, these gaskets will help keep the switch's travel distance closer to a stock HHKB. And with all of the gaskets stuck on the bottom of the sliders, I'll now socket the sliders into the plate. It's important to check that the sliders travel freely within the switch plate before moving on. I had a few sliders like this one that seemed a bit sluggish, so I used the included filing tool to file down the plate until the sliders could move freely. Okay, with all of the 1U sliders in place, it's time to socket the stabilizers for the shift, return, and spacebar keys. The stabilizer wires need to be lubricated before I insert them into the plate. I am using XHT BTZ on the spacebar wire. It's a thick grease that should help minimize any rattling sounds coming from the wire hitting plastic. The smaller 2U stabilizer wires are also getting a thick coat of the same 205 grade zero that I used on the plate. I'm going to temporarily lay the rubber domes on the plate so that they stay neatly organized while I grab the heavy grail case. The 
Packaging for the Heavy Grail is very nice, with some welcome details like a foam cover that doubles as an angled work surface and a lovely product passport with some useful information about this particular Heavy Grail. There is also a small box of screws and tools, and of course, the Heavy Grail itself. The K2 textured finish on this Heavy Grail is gorgeous and has a lot of detail when you take a closer look. Alright, it's time to remove the case screws and stick on the rubbery case feet. With the case opened up, I'll now install the isolation gasket and the switch plate into the top housing. And I'll just remove the rubber domes one last time to make it easier to align the black gasket with the screw holes on the plate. Alright, with the plate screwed in, I can finally seat the rubber domes in place on the sliders. The last thing I'll lube is the PCB itself. This might seem really uh, wrong, but it's completely fine and helps to reduce any unwanted pinging from the capacitive coils. If you've ever lubed springs on an MX switch by donut dipping them, this is kind of similar to that. Okay, I'll now insert the PCB and screw it firmly into place on top of the domes and coils. I'm going to take a moment to align the PCB on the plate. It's very important that the PCB is perfectly aligned with the coil so that keystrokes are accurately detected. With the PCB in place, I'll now carefully install the data cable that mates the switchboard with the controller and seal everything inside the shell with the case screws. Here are the keycaps I'll install on this board. They're MX keycaps made from dye sublimated PBT plastic, which means they're shine and fade resistant. The glyphs are very crisp, even on this reverse sublimated light on dark keycap, and I really like the large lowercase legends. And to celebrate the new metal case, I'm using this aluminum artisan keycap from Escape Labs. And with that, 
The build is complete. I have to say, this keyboard has such a great presence that doesn't really come across in the photos. It has this fantastic weight to it, and the finish on mine looks just absolutely pristine. Another thing that doesn't come across well in the photos either is how wonderfully the edges reflect light and how just solid the whole package looks and feels. I'm so happy and feel incredibly lucky to have gotten my hands on one of these. Hats off to Ryan Norbauer for bringing this project to life. I'll end this video with a short typing test. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and take care.